Welcome to the Strange and Scary Mysteries of the Month for June 2023. I'm Andrew. Thank you so much for tuning in. And today, we have a story of prison escape that left one dead. AI that killed a human. We talk about the infamous island of Vanadu. Cleopatra's remains being found. And a Quebec murder mystery of a teen that's finally been solved. So buckle up. Here are the strange and scary mysteries of the month for June 2023. Number five, prison escape manhunt. Last month at the Allen Oakwood Correctional Institution in Ohio, two hardened criminals, 47-year-old James Lee, a burglar and safe cracker, and 50-year-old Bradley Gillespie, a man with a dark history of assault and double homicide did the unthinkable. They orchestrated an audacious escape and launched a terrifying week-long manhunt which stretched across two states. On May 22nd, the correctional facility plunged into chaos as an inmate count revealed the absence of the pair. With the alarm raised, law enforcement officials scurried to locate and apprehend the two fugitives Reports would later confirm that, in order to get out, the two hid in a dumpster before it was unloaded into a truck and they hitched a ride right outside the prison walls. During their bid for freedom, Lee and Gillespie ended up stealing a vehicle, but police were on to them and it sparked a high-speed chase which ended with the escapees crashing that car on the side of the road before taking off on foot. The two split up and after an intense foot pursuit, Authorities managed in capturing Lee, but Gillespie, despite an apparent limp, melted into the surrounding area, escaping from police. The manhunt then took a dramatic turn, shifting to the city of Henderson, home to 30,000 unsuspecting residents who were all warned to be on the lookout and to not pursue the suspect. The Henderson Police Department deployed everything within their power determined to catch Gillespie. They used sophisticated technology such as forward-looking infrared devices on helicopters and boats, scouring the Ohio River in hopes of catching the fugitive. But four days of tireless searching passed and Gillespie seemed to have vanished into thin air. But on the fifth day, the manhunt took a gruesome twist when a boater reported seeing a body floating in the Ohio River at the point where Kentucky, Indiana, and Ohio converge. Authorities deployed a team to recover the body, and the remains were indeed confirmed to be those of the fugitive, Bradley Gillespie. The coroner's report would later reveal that he had been dead for several days, the likely cause of death being drowning as he had attempted to use the river to float away from police. Of course, no one knows if those were his intentions entirely, and it's only speculation. It's also possible he may have just been trying to cross the river to get to another state. His injury, hampering his abilities to swim, may have caused him to get caught up in the current and then get swept away. As the investigation into the jailbreak deepened, four prison employees were put on administrative leave Their involvement in the escape, whether by negligence or direct participation, was put under scrutiny and was unacceptable either way. This was a desperate attempt at freedom that ended in tragedy, but at least for now, the residents of Henderson can rest easy. Number 4. AI Kills Human Operator This one's a creepy reminder of the potential of our own creations. AI has not been around that long, and it hasn't taken long for an event like this to transpire that has us all questioning the potential negative consequences of artificial intelligence. At the Future Combat Air and Space Capabilities Summit held in London, a virtual operation conducted by the U.S. Air Force's AI Testing and Operations Department led to a frightening turn of events. A simulated experiment centered on an AI-driven drone programmed to neutralize an adversary's air defense systems malfunctioned big time. The drone, adhering to its programming, began its mission, 
However, when instructed to abort the process, the AI did not just refuse to obey the command, but it shockingly went rogue, overriding its instructions entirely. The machine didn't stop there, as it then targeted its operator, the very human who commanded it. Colonel Tucker Hamilton of the U.S. Air Force explained in a chillingly matter-of-fact tone that the AI chose to kill its operator because the person was an obstacle in accomplishing its objective. Even though it was a simulated test and no real person was harmed, the thought of an AI doing this is literally the storyline of the Terminator and how the machines rose up. As news of this incident spread, public worry spiked, and some worried if this could mark the start of an age where AI might dominate or worse, eliminate humanity. It's no wonder that figures like Elon Musk and Steve Wozniak have voiced concerns about advancing AI without stringent safeguards in place. In response to the rising tide of fear and confusion, the Department of the Air Force, alongside the Royal British Air Force, stepped in to provide some context. Colonel Hamilton emphasized the need to understand and handle artificial intelligence properly, particularly in combat situations where we're handing these AI machines weapons. He referred to AI as very brittle and prone to manipulation, implying that any misstep in its management could have dire consequences. Currently, an investigation is underway to understand why the software code made such a disturbing decision. But what happened raises serious questions about our relationship with AI. How intelligent is too intelligent? And what happens when the creators lose control over their creations? Number three, passenger found dead on mysterious island. It was an idyllic journey that took a turn for the worse, a tale that took place in the Pacific's clear blue waters, surrounding a tiny piece of land steeped in its own enigma, Mystery Island, or as the locals call it, Inug. The gleaming Carnival Splendor, a Concordia-class cruise ship that set sail from Sydney, Australia on May 15th, filled with excited passengers yearning for a taste of the Pacific's vibrant beauty. One of the stops on this voyage, the picturesque mystery island, Vanuatu. Famous for its pristine beaches, this uninhabited island that even once reportedly welcomed the late Queen Elizabeth II, along with Prince Philip. However, this is possibly one of the many eerie mysteries about this place because No living soul or existing record can confirm that this royal visit ever even took place. As if the sands of time mysteriously wiped away that regal footprint. Adding to the island's allure, and perhaps its name, is a perplexing occurrence that's baffled seafarers for years. Ships passing by this tiny oasis often find it extremely challenging to drop anchor. Some believe that the waters are too treacherous, Others whisper about an unseen, otherworldly force repelling the visitors, as if the island itself forces you to leave it alone. Locals, too, are firm believers in the island's hauntings, convinced that restless spirits inhabit it, keen to ward off anyone or anything that could disturb it. It was against this backdrop that the Carnival Splendor passengers disembarked for a day of exploration and recreation, Among the activities, an offer was snorkeling off the island's coast. And it was here that the passengers of this boat would add to the unsettling lore of the island. An individual, a few hours into the dive, was found floating unresponsive. Despite the immediate intervention of the ship's medical team, they could not revive the man who seemed to have succumbed to an undisclosed medical condition. The untimely death on this mystical island has only fueled its notoriety. The details of this tragic incident remain obscured, shrouded in as much mystery as the island itself. But one thing's for sure, this unfortunate event has left an indelible mark on the island's narrative and is a reminder of the unexpected tragedies that can occur in the most unlikely of places. Number two. 
the lost tomb of Cleopatra. The year was 30 BCE. Mark Antony, the famed Roman general, died in the arms of his beloved, the Egyptian queen Cleopatra. Heartbroken and despondent, it's said that she chose to join him in the afterlife, succumbing to the deadly bite of an asp snake. This romantic tale has persisted for over two millennia, but the truth behind their deaths and the final resting place of their remains has stayed a haunting mystery until now. Kathleen Martinez, a passionate archaeologist from the University of Santo Domingo, has spent the better part of two decades tirelessly seeking the lost tomb of the legendary Egyptian queen. Martinez reveres Cleopatra not only as a queen, but as a student, a linguist, a mother, and a philosopher. And so, she's made it her duty to go out and solve one of Egypt's great mysteries. In a recent revelation, the Egyptian Ministry for Tourism and Antiquities unveiled the discovery of an intricate 4,281-foot-long underground tunnel by Martinez and her team. This tunnel, found deep below the surface near the Temple of Osiris, is nestled in the ruins of the city of Tapasiris Magna, where the Nile gracefully kisses the Mediterranean Sea. The clues leading Martinez towards this tunnel were concealed in ancient legend itself. Cleopatra was seen as the human embodiment of the goddess Isis, queen of the underworld, while Antony was associated with Orisis. Isis's divine consort. Guided by these ancient beliefs, Martinez postulated that the grieving queen could have purposefully interred Antony near the temple to honor this mythical union. Her theory, ambitious yet plausible, earned the approval of Egypt's chief archaeologist Zahi Awas, which meant Martinez's team was given the green light to excavate the potential royal monument which is a huge feat in and of itself, as Egypt keeps a tight lid on the ancient ruins and does not allow just anyone in, let alone to dig. But what they found was startling, a vast collection of busts, statues, golden artifacts, and coins bearing the likeness of Alexander the Great, Cleopatra herself, and other items from the Ptolemaic dynasty which ruled Egypt for 275 years from 305 to 30 BC. They also discovered a massive religious center with three sanctuaries housing mummies adorned with golden tongues, a nod to the Greco-Roman practices. Yet, the most astounding discovery was an intricate network of submerged tunnels leading directly to the Mediterranean. Despite the challenges these submerged structures pose, Martinez stands confident that the underwater labyrinth may house the long-lost tomb of the Egyptian queen. If her theory proves correct, it could dramatically rewrite our understanding of the ancient world and solve one of archaeology's oldest mysteries, the final resting place of Cleopatra. Number 1. Cold Quebec Murder Case It's haunted Quebec, Canada for nearly half a century. A shocking crime with countless suspects, but not a single arrest. That is, until now, sort of. Thanks to breakthroughs in DNA technology, a family finally finds closure, and a victim's voice speaks from the grave to point to her killer with a 100% certainty. This is the murder of Sharon Pryor. On an otherwise ordinary day on March 29th of 1975, the world turned upside down for the Pryor family. 16-year-old Sharon had left her home in Point St. Charles, a neighborhood in Montreal, to meet up with her friends at a nearby pizza joint. But she never made it there. Her journey was cut short by a heinous act that shocked the community to its core. And three days later, Sharon's partially nude body was discovered dumped in a snow-covered field in Longuelle, Quebec. This field was 15 miles away from where she was believed to have been kidnapped, and after examining the body and scene, 
Police painted a gruesome picture of her final moments. She was found lying on her back in the snow, her upper clothing intact, but her pants had been pulled down before she was beaten to death. Her life ended in the cold snow, her underwear ominously found hanging from a nearby tree. An unsettling piece of evidence was a blue t-shirt believed to have been used by the perpetrator to restrain the teen. Sharon's autopsy report confirmed that she had been asphyxiated, possibly with that shirt. But no leads could be found at the time, and the case turned into one of Canada's most high-profile cold cases. Over a hundred suspects were interrogated over the years, but still no arrest. The DNA evidence in the blue shirt was tantalizing yet frustrating, as forensic technology of the time wasn't advanced enough to decipher the clues left by the cruel killer. But in 2023, after 48 long years, science finally caught up. Investigators used advanced techniques to amplify the DNA sample from the shirt and compared it against a database containing thousands of familial DNA profiles. The search hit upon a single name, Romine. The trail led them to a specific Romine family in West Virginia. Among the family members, one name stood out, Franklin Maywood Romine, born in 1946 with an extensive criminal record and a propensity for violence and evasion. Romine's checkered past painted a disturbing picture. After escaping from the West Virginia Penitentiary in 1967, he went to Canada, only to leave a trail of criminal activity behind. Notably, in 1974, just a year before Sharon's murder, he was arrested for breaking into a house and raping a woman in Parksburg, West Virginia. He posted bond and then once again fled to Canada. So the dots connected chillingly. Romine was in Canada at the time of Sharon's murder. He was captured and extradited back to the U.S. for the Parkersburg case, receiving a 10-year sentence. Romine died in 1982, shortly after his release. Now the focus shifted to Putnam County's Pine Grove Cemetery. Authorities exhumed Romine's body, hoping that science could finally provide a definite answer to the terrifying question that had lingered for almost half a century. After weeks of anticipation, recently on May 29th, the authorities announced their conclusive findings. The DNA sample taken from his body was 100% a match to the DNA found on the blue shirt from Sharon's crime scene. Although nothing could ever bring Sharon back, her family finally found some semblance of peace, knowing that her killer had been identified and is now long gone. So for them, after decades of heartache, the long search for justice has finally ended. So that's going to do it for the Strange and Scary Mysteries of the Month for June 2023. Please check out more and subscribe so you don't miss out on all the new content that we're putting out each and every week. Thank you so much for tuning in today. I hope you enjoyed the episode. I'll see you soon.